So, uh, this weekend in Britain, shall we say, we saw uh, the election of a new leader of UKIP. And to be honest, this was quite, um, <laughs> generally quite, uh, potentially quite disturbing. Uh, one of the things that has been really prevalent in Britain, really for the past couple of years, even more so, is the blaming of immigrants, particularly Muslim immigrants, as being the the woes and really the problems, not for society at large, but generally targeting uh, communities that have large Muslim populations and, you know, trying to appeal to the, you know, the local uh, ethnic whites and to say that, you know, the problems of your area aren't you or lack of problem or, you know, the fact that the council hasn't been building houses, it's been the Muslims. And you can, you can see all over, you know, their pages with, you know, the anti-Muslim rhetoric. It's all over the place. Now, what was really worrying is that UKIP, a blatantly, openly racist, well, shall we say, closetly racist party, as they have been under Farage, uh, basically decided, uh, well, two people in particular candidates were Anne-Marie Walters, who is the director for Sharia Watch UK, uh, and also a guy called um, here we are. a guy called Peter Peter Whittle. Now both these people are really, really sort of anti-Muslim and would have stated that if they became leader, they would become uh, introduced law specifically targeting Muslims. Now that is something that, you know, in an open democratic multicultural society, targeting any laws against a specific group of people is just blatantly wrong because these people, uh, you know, particularly Amory uh, Walters has written on Sharia Watch the numerous problems with, you know, halal meat, but has no problems, for example, with uh, Jewish butcheries who sell kosher meat, who is, it's almost, you know, literally it's exactly the same, really. They're using, you know, and she uses, again, the religious argument uh, based on this, that we are apparently, you know, we are a, a white Anglo-Saxon Christian nation, and, you know, for some reason it's a problem when the Muslims do it, but when, you know, the Jews have a, a similar law, oh, pfft, it's fine, no problem. That's mysteriously okay, but, you know, when the Muslims do it, you know... And it's the same thing with um, Peter Whittle. Uh, both these people, you know, when Muslims do it, oh, it's the end of the world, but if a white guy or someone else happens to do it, I don't care. Now, luckily, uh, both these candidates lost. Uh, the winner was a guy called Henry Bolton, with 29% of the vote. However, what is really disturbing is how close Anne-Marie Walters actually came. She came in with 21% of the vote. Now that's a nine point difference, but that could have been very different. Remember, these two candidates I'm talking about, uh, Marie Walters and Peter Whittle, um, if one had decided to drop out and endorse the other one, uh, they would have won. They would have beaten uh, Henry Bolton easily uh, with their combined uh, votes. Uh, just to tell you what those were. So the winner, um, Henry Bolton, was uh, 3,874. Now, Anne-Marie got uh, 200, uh, sorry, uh, 2,755 votes, and Peter Whittle got 1,413 votes. Now, if you combine those two numbers, one of them wins. And it is... Obviously, uh, a very chilling uh, topic that this blatant open racism that both these people practice and preach would have t almost become, you know, a mainstream political party, which UK technically are, even though they are almost non-existent uh, within the country, would have been, well, it would, it would have been interesting, but ultimately you would have seen really on the political spectrum, these two people vote, you know, lobbying and pushing for, you know, anti-Muslim laws within the UK. And 
as I've said before, they're the, these people are massive hypocrites because there are similar religions with, you know, similar, you know, religious laws and type, you know, that type of thing. But, you know, as I've said before, when the Muslims do it, it's the end of the world. But, you know, if, if another religion do, does it or someone that isn't Muslim, well, they don't care. So we got lucky, uh, to be honest, uh, on this one. Um, however, the fate of UKIP is still that they will forever be a party of complete irre irrelevance. They were always, that was always the case, it was always going to happen. Uh, the, you know, this general election, if, you know, leave, if Remain had won, UKIP still would not be of political force. They would have lost, um, you know, I don't have any proof for that, but I guarantee you that's what have happened. Considering the fact that everyone said, oh, UKIP's on the rise uh, and all this nonsense. But look what happened in the past last general election. It doesn't matter uh, about Brexit at all. They completely got wiped off the political map. That year, uh, they primarily got votes from people who were dissatisfied with either voting for, you know, Tory or Labour. So they wanted to just, you know, send a message, uh, which has pretty much happened uh, with a lot of people voting for leave, to be honest. But anyway, less about that, uh, more on this. Um, so yeah, we dodged a bullet on this one. Um, but as I've said before, there is a really growing concern within the UK of a really nasty undercurrent of basically racism towards Muslims. And as I've said before, this is a problem and this will only help uh, terrorist organizations because if you look into a lot of these uh, people have been you know either caught before terrorist organizations or went on to commit terrorist organizations if you look into their family history or they themselves they have suffered abuse part of that abuse which you know <laughs> gave the motivation to become terrorists so this uh, Rhetoric, this anti-Muslim rhetoric, is dangerous, and it helps ISIS more than it hinders them. So, you know, luckily they lost. However, it will not be the last, because Pigda is still around, and we'll have to see what happens there.